Hello there! Welcome to the next in a series where we look at various games with the perspective of a Japanese language learner. Today I want to look at the first game that I tried to play in Japanese. Though admittedly, it wasn't the first I actually finished. That claim to fame for some reason goes to Yokai Watch 2. Fine enough game, just... yeah. Didn't really see that one coming. Regardless, after finally picking it back up again after my initial attempt, I did eventually finish the game we'll be talking about today. And that game is Last Window, The Secret of Cape West. A sequel to the cult classic Hotel Dusk, Room 215, it's a mystery genre point-and-click adventure game starring the ex-detective Kyle Hyde of Super Smash Bros. Trophy and Spirit fame. This game did get an English release, though it was limited to Europe and it seemed to be rather limited, so the going prices for it aren't great. The Japanese version, on the other hand, has a much more agreeable price. Or at least had. It's been a while since I bought this, clearly. The general premise involves the aforementioned Kyle Hyde coming back to his Los Angeles apartment block, Cape West, to find it listed for demolition, with the residents getting ready to find accommodation elsewhere. And to complicate matters, he receives an anonymous request to find the missing Red Star, which is supposedly hidden within the building. As Kyle attempts to find out more about the mysterious request and the Red Star itself, he starts uncovering the intertwined secrets of the apartment building and its residents. Now for those of you playing at home, this game has kanji with no furigana. So if you're just bringing hiragana or katakana to the table, this won't be fun. Come back to it when you've got about 400 or so under your belt. Unless you want to get burnt out incredibly fast, of course, we all like different things. But overall, the dialogue is filled with everyday down-to-earth expressions and vocab, so it's a nice chill time for the majority of it. Gameplay is part point-and-click and part visual novel, all wrapped up in a 3D space. Traversing around Cape West is honestly a bit of a wonky experience, but not many visual novel-style games let you free roam in this manner, so it's still greatly appreciated. I'm not sure everyone would be a fan, but there's something really satisfying about physically having to open doors with keys and sort through your own luggage. This also flows naturally into the puzzles of the game, which typically involve picking up an assortment of items and trying to achieve a certain task. An early example being when you're trying to find a resident's ring that she lost in her room. You can find a number of methods of retrieving it, but not all of them are successful. It's neat to see the effort done to make these other methods have their own function, even if it's not the correct answer. All that being said, it's not like the gameplay is fun on its own. It's how it feels alive in context that it gets its appeal. Speaking of, the game's cast is one of the major draws here, and that's not because they're going to be making your top 10 list anytime soon. Though, if you like the beautiful sketchbook rotoscoping style, you're not alone there. They simply have a great feeling to them, and they just plain fit well into the context. All the residents live their own lives and get in and out of the building throughout each day. They're not just waiting for Kyle to talk to them at all times. Quite the opposite, actually. Most of them aren't even interested in Kyle's investigative antics, and will even get annoyed if they feel he's getting too nosy. The residents' relationships are clearly based on proximity first and foremost, so it's a very fascinating dynamic to watch. Kyle doesn't naturally have people's trust, and will often have to rely on more sneaky methods to get the information he needs, even from people who are generally more friendly with him. And the icing on the cake on this game's well-realized feel? The game's soundtrack is incredibly good. It's jazzy, chill, and suspenseful, somehow all at the same time, too. You can't beat it for background music. I personally love to listen to it all the time outside of the game, and it accents the theme of the game incredibly well. Also of note, Last Window is one of the few fancy games to utilize a vertical orientation for the DS. It just feels like the gaming equivalent of curling up with a good book on a rainy day, and I highly recommend such a setting if the chance presents itself. Going into some good aspects to playing this in Japanese, the obvious high point is that it's a very text-heavy experience. On top of that, there aren't any fancy way markers, so if you weren't paying attention, you'll have to deal with being a bit lost as you try to find who you need to talk to next. You can't fall asleep at the wheel here, and expect to make much progress. Frustrating at times for when your brain fries and you're just not feeling it, but language practice isn't known for being a cakewalk. To help, however, there's not much in the way of overly technical dialogue. What you'll encounter is a lot of everyday conversation, with your expected mystery genre vocabulary sprinkled throughout. If you're planning on playing other games in the genre, like Ace Attorney or Professor Layton, for instance, you'll find any vocab you learn here very useful indeed. Certainly beats learning a bunch of super-specific terms you'll rarely see again. 
probably worth noting as well, as fans of Hotel Dusk would be well aware. There is a threat of a game over looming over the player at all times. If you read the room incorrectly, or cause enough of a ruckus that your sneaking around gets found out, you might find the trail of clues ends prematurely. Ultimately, this simply puts you to before said game over situation, so it's not like you'll have to start from scratch. But it is another layer of reason to be paying attention and seek understanding, which is always welcome. The kind of variety found in the cast is brilliant, as it brings with it so many different kinds of speaking styles, and they all treat Kyle differently. Basic examples being the various uses of saying you. Kyle generally uses Omaya, because he's a blunt kind of person, but we'll switch it up to Kimmy when it's more appropriate for him to be nicer. Likewise, when Margaret leaves a conversation, she'll say Shitsude, which is far more formal than Kyle's usual Kodade. If you're unfamiliar with a lot of the nuances of Japanese formalities and such, Last Windows cast really can give you a nice round experience of the topic, especially when compared to the more zany scripts most other Japanese games are prone to have. As if made for second language players, at the end of each chapter, Kyle thinks back on the recent events as a sort of recap, asking questions along the way. This is literally a comprehension quiz, which is stupidly convenient and helpful. It highlights important events and concepts, reinforcing vocab and plot points that you might have misunderstood or not thought worth translating too seriously. The questions are multiple choice, and there's no penalty for trial and error in your way through it, but I highly suggest giving it your proper attention. Really helped me out a couple of times, let me tell you. This isn't a game for Japanese beginners, and without a solid 400 kanji behind your back, you're gonna have a bad time. You'll likely be looking up a lot of genre-specific words, so keeping the common stuff to a minimum is good. That being said, the reading material is just your everyday kind of stuff, so it's a pretty neat starting point for breaking into the visual novel side of things for intermediate learners. Obviously, there's not much point playing it in Japanese if you aren't familiar with the language. There is an English release, albeit a rare one, and there's not much enjoyment to be found here if you can't read it. As is natural with a game with as much dialogue as this, it's a neat way to build up your reading skills. The game somewhat locks progression behind understanding, incentivizing the need for the player to pay attention. This marries up well if you're interested in the plot too, to give a reward for the effort. There's not much here in terms of fun gameplay if you're completely lost, however, so getting bogged down and giving up because it's more of a chore is very possible. It's not entry level by any means, and I got burnt out playing it a few times before I saw the credits. But keep at it and it'll be pretty rewarding. The game is relatively mundane, with you mainly just walking around and talking to people. Also, the plot is nothing groundbreaking. But the pacing works well to keep the player's interest if you let it, and it's pretty engrossing to explore Kate West bit by bit as it opens up over the course of the game. While there's not really a whole heap, the puzzles that are in the game are pretty fun and blend into the gameplay really naturally. I knew what I was getting into because of Hotel Dusk, so I enjoyed it thoroughly, but it's certainly not going to be as engaging for everyone. However, if it does catch your eye, it's probably worth a look in. Thanks very much for watching! If there's any particular games you'd like me to look at, or topics you'd like me to focus on, please don't hesitate to ask! Well then, until next time, ja mata!